Paul Stankard is an internationally acclaimed glass artist. His works can be found at major museums around the world, the Louvre in Paris, the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York, and closer to home, the Museum of American Glass at Wheaton Arts. We recently visited the master at his studio in Mantua, New Jersey, where he has been perfecting his art for the past 40 years. This is the result of 40 years of searching for ways to be creative. I've invented a language that allows me to share what I care about, the beauty and the sanity that is uh, evident in nature. And over my life, I've derived great joy from experiencing Mother Earth and the plants, the plant kingdom, Look at this, little knotweed, little bouquet. I love the words of Walt Whitman. Whitman, I, I, I think of Whitman as an environmentalist. There are sentences in Song of Myself that really touch me. One sentence in particular is, the morning glory by my window satisfies me more than the metaphysics of books. Very sweet. I mean, I love the idea of nature comes together in, in perfect comedy. And I'm a maker. I'm a craftsperson. And Whitman in Song of Myself has the narrowest hinge of my hand puts to scorn all machine. When I read that, after working, manipulating glass with my hands, I absolutely had an epiphany. I mean, it's, it was so profound. I was uh, a senior at Pittman High School, and uh, as a senior, you were required to go to the guidance counselor's office. So I told the guidance counselor that I was interested in a trade. I was a poor student. Actually, uh, I went through school as uh, undiagnosed dyslexic. So I was in the dummy class but loved making things. I loved wood shop and metal shop. And, and uh, so I came home with the brochure uh, for, for Salem Vocational and Technical School. And I, at the dinner table, I showed it to my dad. I said, Pop, I'm thinking about being a machinist at Salem Vocational Technical School. He said, that's a great trade, Paul. So I handed him the brochure, he opened it up, he goes, oh my goodness, scientific glass blowing? That's what you want to be, a scientific glass blower. And I said, well, what do they do? And he said, they make the laboratory equipment and uh, the instruments for chemists. So he was so excited about glass blowing, uh, scientific glass blowing, that I thought, okay, well, uh, yeah, I'll try. This was in 1960. And I saw these students with a big bushy flame, you know, melting tubing. And I thought, wow, that's what I want to be. Yeah, this is really sweet. Yeah, it's gonna be you got the, the brown-eyed Susans and the forget-me-nots and the... So scientific glass flying was a good trade, but when I when I was introduced to the craft, I almost in, instinctively started making birds and dogs and cats. I mean, I really found my creative needs through the glass. We have a rich glass tradition in South Jersey. And one of the crown jewels of that tradition is the Millville Bowes paperweight. <laughs> and I was fascinated with the idea that here is this glass rose suspended in a ball of gla uh, clear glass and that it was a mystery, that it was a lost art. It was made in the late 1800s.
I feel that my work is the best it's ever been. I really feel that way. I'm uh, not doing production work. I'm not worrying about the marketplace. I'm doing work that I care about. I'm very, very conscious of what's been done before me. And I want to uh, make my work advance the paperweight tradition, advance the, the glass art tradition. And uh, well, I think my work's more personal than it's ever been.